Now it's time to break it. It's behind the scenes. Welcome back to Split Screen's podcast. <laughs> Welcome back. Skippity bump bump. Skippity bump bump. Skippity bump bump. Are we in an isekai right now? We are in an isekai right now. Isekai! <laughs> Alright. I'm your host, Aaron. We're going to be talking about video games. This is Zachary. What's up, guys? Nick Lynn Blue. Hello. Gavin Campbell. Skippity bump. Uh, how are we doing today, guys? Uh, trying to breathe. Yeah, doing better than that. That was rough. That was awesome. Oh, that, that very good bloopers. <laughs> oh, it is. Um, all right, welcome back. Zach, I know you've been playing some games this week. There's I not tons of news, but this might just be us oh, recounting our shit. What? I didn't ask any questions at all this week. I was going to bring that up, but afterwards, since we already missed two. Fuck. It's no, all right. It's too late. Zachary, what have you been playing? I have continued to soak my life in the Horizon Forbidden West. I am now just about 30 hours into this game, maybe a third of the way through the main storyline, because I'm taking a lot of time just to explore. This game is beautiful, and I've said this last week, but it is beautiful. It is full of life. Um, there's so much detail in it. Like, I, I like to spend time in photo mode, like, get a few mm -hmm. screenshots and stuff. And if you do it just right, you can see the pores, the individual pores on, like, skin textures and stuff. It's awesome. Um, there's been an update, so I haven't had any of those weird glitch frame rate drops uh, that, that last forever. Time. Yeah, other than that, well, there was one where it almost started up again, and I mm -hmm. quickly saved and restarted um, the game. But okay, cool. Um, I found out you can fly in this game, and I really want to get to that mission where I can get one of these pterodactyl robots and fly around the map. That'd be sweet. Because it is, like... Not, from what the commercial made it look like was you just hang on to their legs like a kite. Mm -hmm. um, just like the shield um, parachute you get. Um, but no, you ride this pterodon robot wherever you want on the map. That'd be cool. I saw this in like a playthrough that I was just randomly going through TikTok and I'm like, I need this now. <laughs> There's so much I want to do with it. Okay. Yeah, that sounds badass. Uh, if you haven't started it, Start it! It's a really good game, especially if you've liked Horizon Zero Dawn. Loved it. And I just installed it, but I have not yet started, so hopefully tomorrow. I have tomorrow off. There is a lot of lore um, in these games, so it's been a while since you've played Her um, Zero Dawn. Do a recap video real quick. Yeah, that's what I was going to um, do. Now that I don't have time to play it. Thinking back, there's clues that set up something that happens about midway through the first five hours of the game that I should have saw coming, but it kind of blew my mind and I really liked. Blew my freaking mind. Blew my freaking mind, man. Um, Gavin, how disappointing is Elden Ring? <laughs> Zero out of 10. So, not to be quite honest with you all, I stayed up late to on, on Thursday night, well, not late, just till 10 p.m. for when it's unlock for me to be able to play. I hopped on immediately. I was a fan of Absolutely. And you uninstalled immediately. <laughs> Positively blown a fucking way. Uh, it's fucking amazing. It's actually, I'm, and I'm saying this legitimately, it exceeds my, exceeded my expectations. Yeah, this is getting a lot of 10 out of 10 reviews. I was like, it, it uh, paid off. Paid off. They bought oh. those. Either way, it exceeded my expectations. Uh, it is, we're going to go through a few points here. I, I was like, and do you want to? The bad stuff now, the bad stuff later. It's up to you. You're the director of this. Yeah. This is your review. You're directing this shit. All right, we're doing the bad stuff first. The thing that sucks for the PS5 and only the PS5 version for some fucking reason is lag drops. And this is a constant issue because everyone's experiencing it that are playing on the PS5. So it, I shouldn't start it just yet. It, it, Wait for a patch. I was like, they, they click, like, it's still fun to play. I'm playing on the PS5 version. It lags here and there. I'm not noticing it tons, uh, but some people are getting, like, like real pissed off with it. Well, this is kind of a game where you need to, like, have perfect timing. If it starts lagging, it could... Yeah, if, if this is a Souls game, you need perfect timing. Yes. I will say that this is... With how it's set up, it's open world. Yeah, you, know, you get this like, little tutorial area. You get through it, and you get thrown out into the world immediately. You can go anywhere from this point. 
uh, is a lot, lot, lot like Breath of the Wild when it gets to that in that ter in that terms. Mm -hmm. uh, there isn't really map markers. You get a map, you have to go to the area and find the, where the map markers are to get it. Uh, and like you look at it, and like it'll like have like the fast shell points and like the big stuff on the map. But generally, when you're actually playing, uh, you don't get any uh, true markers. Uh, to, go or, to go where you want. And what I like about it, which I think is going to make it a lot more accessible, especially like to you or to Aaron or Nick, because I think you all actually would really enjoy it, uh, is since it is open world, unlike a Souls game where if you get stuck on a boss where you're just throwing your head against that boss <clears throat> until either you give up entirely or it dies, this time, in this one because it's open world, if you get to a boss that you're having struggles with, you just fucking turn around and go somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, which is really nice, like, and it's, and it's massive. I, I've only done a small part of the area, and I'm still finding some new stuff when I'm traveling around. There's these side quests that you get that aren't like, you, there's not like a quest log, like a proper quest log. Like, you, you, you're gonna have to actually remember some of the stuff. And, like, uh, early on, I found, I was walking around, and I had someone saying, Hey, why the fuck are you just looking? Like, why can't you see me? Like, I'm right here. Like, hey, say something back to me. And I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Because I'm in the middle of nowhere, there's not any enemies around me, anything like that. It was actually a, a character that got, uh, like, like spelled to look like a tree. You had to, like, attack the tree to break the spell. But, you know, but, like, I just was wandering around for, like, five minutes trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. Uh, no, it was cool. And then if you go back to that area later, which I don't remember where it is, I'm sure I'll stumble into him later, he'll actually go and get you something uh, from his, like, clan. Like, as a bit better reward for saving him from the sorcery. Uh, and I've talked to some of my friends that have played uh, more than even I have. And I've put, like, 16 hours in this fucking game already. And they, they've never even seen that guy. Uh, they're having a completely different experience while still being similar. There's a, there's a storyline that's there. Uh, there's cutscenes. The storyline's much more there than before. I think that's really George R. R. Martin's touch you see in the lore. Uh, you have so many options to do it. You have multiplayer, which is always fun. You get up to three people playing along with you. Uh, for majority of the bosses, I think the only bosses that are exempt are the like main like story mode bosses. Mm -hmm. The but like everyone else, you can invite <clears throat> like, friends to. If you're more of a solo play solo player, they have these summons that you can do instead of having like multiplayer like uh, other people joining you. You can summon. Uh, one that's pretty popular with people is there's a pack of wolves. It's a trio of wolves, and like they're with you until they die, uh, and then you can resell them if you're in the right area for it. And they are actually helpful. Uh, they don't do tons of damage, uh, at least not my iteration of them, because uh, I haven't upgraded them at all yet. Uh, but they do. But like, say you're getting surrounded, you can have them pull off some of the aggro, and so you can make your, your escape. You yeah. can either decide to go back in and try to fight, or you can run away. Uh, you get a horse for traversal. His name is Torrent. He is like a demigod horse. And there's these things, there's like these like updrafts, like in like Breath of the Wild, that you have to be on the horse and it gives him like super jump. And yeah. like it gets to new areas. It doesn't, you don't get fall damage from that. You'll get fall damage uh, jumping off of other shit <laughs> with him. He's not negated to fall damage, only if you use the super jump up to like get up cliffs and stuff. The open world is. By far, one of the best open worlds I've ever experienced. Uh, it's not bloated with like stuff to do, like some games do, like Far Cry. It's like Far Cry is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't feel empty throughout some areas, like Skyrim sometimes does, where there's like that stretch that just is there's nothing. nothing. Uh, at, like there's enemies, there's craft. You they have a crafting thing, and they did a lot of quality of life choices, like. Uh, once you get the crafting thing, you can craft anywhere. You don't need to be around a bonfire to craft. You don't need to be anything like that. You can do the fast travel to your previous bonfires, which are called, called spots of grace. Uh, it's like kind of like the divine, like the touch of divine left. Uh, and you can teleport to them like at any point, like, unless you're in an active fight, obviously. But yeah. uh, I mean, I, I haven't tried because it doesn't pause the game when you open up the map. <laughs> it just blocks your whole ass screen, so I haven't tried. I don't know if it if you can or I not. I almost feel like it wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Most games don't, but who knows, maybe. It, uh, You'll have to try it. Yeah. The weapons... I, I was keep, keep, sorry, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. But the open world is just... I, I'm feeling 
engaged throughout the entirety of it, even just moving from one area to the next, whether that is that enemies or like some lore, or sometimes you find like a dungeon or a cave system or a unique item that you've never seen before, weapons, just sometimes you find a little mini boss in a little area. Uh, there's, there's like hunting, which doesn't feel tedious. Like I don't go out of my way to try to go hunt. You find things on the way around and a lot of the hunting items share similar uh, loot pools. So like say like you need feathers to make your uh, your arrows if you're making your own arrows you can just kill it. like any bird and you'll get arrows and some birds are stronger like there's a enemy that I personally think is a badass uh, it's, it's called a sto it's called a uh, the switch on the back of the device shut up to turn off music or other media you can okay Google shut up <laughs> where the fuck was I. Uh, storm crow. Oh, it's called a storm wind, storm wing war hawk, and it's fucking massive. It is as big as your character, just like in standing height, and it just has fucking like long swords taped to its fucking feet. And it's a cool, it's a cool enemy. And it's not like a boss or anything. It's a normal, just regular enemy. They're fast. They're flying. They're interesting. I like them a lot. But you, they also drop their their. Uh, you know, drop uh, storm, storm wind feathers, which gives you stronger, which makes like your arrow shoot further or some yeah. shit. I, I have only killed a handful of them. They are a bitch to fight. Uh, but it, it just keeps you very engaged. It's one of the best open world experiences I've had in recent years, or I can really remember. It, it outclasses a lot of it. Like Breath of the Wild did a very good open world. Oh, yeah. uh, the world itself, like kind of like the lore, is that like these two like continents like smash together is kind of how it does and a lot of open world games have it and I'm, i have an issue again it's not like a bad issue and it's not a bad issue but it's it, where it looks too orderly like even when they try to introduce chaos to it, it still ends up being like clear that it's not it's manufactured yeah. this feel this doesn't feel orderly like this this manages to actually feel like a very organic uh, world like the where uh, the plates are uh, smashing together, how the caves are formed. Nothing feels like it was just like thrown there. Yeah. Uh, like sometimes, like Skyrim sometimes felt like they just kind of threw a fucking cave somewhere. Nothing bad with that, but it's very, it, it's a blast. Uh, it's both easy and difficult. It's easy because you can turn around if you're having too much of an issue and leave and go and go train up on other areas, do different missions, do fight different bosses, go to a whole different area, get new weapons, get new skills, power yourself up, and you can go back to that first one and have a much easier time. Uh, which I think is very helpful uh, because part of the reason the Souls likes are difficult because it's throwing your head at a wall over and over again. If you so get if you get stuck, uh, you like there's not like much to do besides go through the same area over and over again to level up some and then try again. This time you can just you can go somewhere else and have a completely different experience than what you're than before and then like when you feel like you've gotten better weapons or stronger or better spells it, you can go right in. Uh, so I think that's really nice thing is more accessible. Uh, it's still a difficult game, don't make no mistake, uh, but they added stealth mechanics to it if you sh choose to do stealth, uh, which is nice. They, very, they clearly took that from Sekiro, Sekiro. it plays, it, it Sekiro. Uh, works very similar to that. Uh, and like, and honestly, like sometimes I get into fights and I'm like, oh fuck this, and I hop on torrent your mystical, your spirit steed, and just run the fuck away. And sometimes it works. Sometimes you get your ass got, anyways, because uh, some of the enemies have their own horses. Sometimes you have a mounted combat, and a mounted combat uh, feels better with longer weapons. I made the mistake of trying to fight with my dagger. Uh, did a whole lot of me getting my ass whooped by the motherfucker on the horse <clears throat> with a pole arm. Uh, and that brings me to the next point is that the weapons and the spells and all of that, it, they, it's massive. They have a huge, I, I have only seen a little bit of it, and the things that I've gotten are really cool. Uh, I use mostly just a basic scimitar because that's just kind of like my go-to, but I also got beat a, a little side boss and I didn't even know it was there. I, there was a little puzzle involved with it, I figured out the puzzle, got it unlocked and got into there and beat the boss. And it gave me the sword, it's, a, it's like the sickle, and... Uh, it's special abilities that like turns into a weapon. It just does it, like a huge, and it does a decent amount of damage. And it's very helpful for large groups of weaker enemies. It kind of gets your ass killed against one big bad because 
it's not the fastest. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have, and that's, and that's its own unique weapon skills. Weapons have their own unique skills, and then you have your Ashes of War, which is different. Like, I use that, the Ash of War I use on my scimitar is called Storm, is called Stormblade, which literally is just like, you like lash out, like, like it's, it's wind, but like a wind blade out. And it was awesome. Uh, I, I used it a lot. It was my go-to. Uh, I upgraded up to some sorceries and stuff like that. And the sorceries are also in depth. Uh, back to the weapons. I, one of the weapons I got for beating one of the big bosses, probably the first one that most people, well, well, not the first one, but like the main, like the main story bosses, the first one that I beat, uh, he gave me, it gives you an item that lets you talk to another uh it gives you an item that you bring to another character that lets you make a sorcery or a weapon out of their soul or whatever the fuck they call it. I can't remember, like remnant or something like that. And the one I got for this one uh, is either a giant axe, which is cool. I didn't go with that. I paid a little bit of extra of the runes, which is what they call souls in this. Uh, like your currency, how you level up, how you buy things. It's one and the same. Uh, and it's a fucking dragon head. It's like an undead dragon head that's just grafted to your arm. So like it like breathes fire, it moves around a bit, you, know, like you can chomp with it. It's cool. I don't use it tons, but it's cool. Uh, and it has its own unique skills. It's considered a legendary weapon. So that on top of having all of this, it has its own, it get, ups your fire resistance, if I remember correctly. And, and when you use the flame breath attack, it, uh, the stamina consumption is a little bit lower for it. Uh, and, and that's just a couple of the cool cool weapons I've seen. Uh, like, a, there's a great sword that I got for beating this lion guy. Uh, his name was uh, uh, Begotten Lion, Lionid, or Leonid, or something like that. And it's called the, and it's a great sword, which in this game, great swords, it, it's a two handed sword. Like, great swords get fucking massive sometimes, like, mm -hmm. bigger than your character. This one is a great sword that's made out of other swords, like, just like smelted together. It looks fucking sick. I can't use it. I focus more magic because the magic's ridiculous, too. Now, getting the magic, there's sorceries, pyromancies, and miracles. They use different stats to scale off of those things. Sorceries scale off of intellect. Uh, Pyromancy scale off of, I believe, uh, strength. It's a strength based thing. I think you still need like a couple points of intellect to actually use it properly. And then uh, the miracles scale off of faith. They each have their own things, and even within those things, they're, even within their own like categories, they have subclasses for each thing. I've, for the sorceries, I've noticed I've only gotten uh, two or three of the ones. They have the classic sorceries, which are like kind of blue, like either like darts or arrows or homing missiles or whatever the fuck you want to go with it. it lots of stuff. These are the ones I've seen. I know there's others out there I haven't seen yet. I've been trying to not spoil it for myself because it's very fun. But it's all early game stuff. Uh, one of the other ones is gravity-based magic. So, like, you have, like, gravity swords is one where you lift up, like, like you just rip out rocks and just huck them at enemies, and those are homing in, so they, like, they follow the enemy. Uh... Like, and sometimes it's blocked, well, sometimes it's not. It was very helpful to me. It, it staggers most enemies, including bosses, with multiple casts of it. Uh, they, they've also, they also have one that's uh, called the Carnelian sl uh, Slash, or Carnelian Sword, uh, w which uh, lets you use it as, like, an, an extra slash weapon. Like, it turns into a sword very quickly. It's a very, very quick sorcery, and just brings it in. Uh, and what was nice about that was it was an instantaneous cast if you were attacking with your other your other weapon first or anything like if you did another action you would immediately follow that up. So sometimes if you sometimes if you like some weapons have longer combos than others. Obviously, bigger weapons have like three hit combos uh, before it like resets, and then you can chain that into the sorceries. There is one that I did spoil myself on that I'm excited for that I don't know where the fuck you get it from. It's called uh, Renala's Full Moon, and what it does is you more you basically summon a fucking moon and throw it at their goddamn face. Uh, what else was there? And then we got uh, the pyromancies. That's pretty. There's a lot of magic, like fire magic and fireballs, and like all of that. They added uh, ice magic, which I haven't seen before. So you have your you have you know the opposite of fire, ice. Uh, the miracles are kind of like more like faith based. 
well, they are faith based, so yeah, like, it's like your paladin. Yeah, and like, and there's lots of stuff there. There's there's a healing spell which is very helpful and doesn't require much faith to use. Uh, there's like there's spells that boost your like armor. There's spells that knock enemies away, including bosses away from you. Uh, I know that there's one that uh, lets you basically like it's like summoning like a giant like golden axe and you like bring it down. Lots of variations. And that's and that's the only stuff I've seen. There's probably hundreds and hundreds of spells for each of these things, and it's been very inter fun for your, like changing my play style up. That's and that's another thing I think it was really accessible in previous Souls games. Like you could choose what you wanted to play as, but there was definitely like the the best choice that would make the game a lot easier. Uh, in this one, sorceries do make the game easier, so I do say if you go with it, it's fun anyways. Uh, yeah. Because they all have their own, like, unique, like, how they form and everything like that. Like, none of the spells are, like, the same. Like, they might do similar things, but they all, like, are visually shown differently. Uh, but, like, usually, I usually go greatsword when I play games, in these games. Because it does a shit ton of damage, and, and it means a giant sword. It's fun to, f fun to fucking slash the giant sword. Uh, and... I like I used a dagger for like one of the first times I've ever used in a Souls game, and it was working. It worked for me. It didn't just screw. It didn't just give me a shorter reach and screw the foot and just screw me. Yeah. Uh, the swords are cool. Axes are cool. And then on top of that, having all the unique skills that you can add to these, you can mix and match on the skills. There's skills that you can use. There's skills that you can use that is just for like shields. Uh, one that I use is is called Stormwall. I've got a lot of storm themed spells in Ashes and the Ashes of War, which is like the customization for the weapons and and uh, shields. So like and the one the Stormwall basically makes your shield super big for a second. And it lets you like tank a much harder strike. And I found that for the most part you can use it to parry. It's a bigger parry window for like bosses and stuff. So you can actually like. If you're at, like getting like really bogged down, you can usually use it and get them the fuck away from you. Uh, there's another one I have called it's called like Storm Cyclone or Cyclone or something like that. Mm -hmm. And just uh, you, when you use it, it's a weapon skill, and when you use it, it causes like a giant like area of effect like tornado around you, and it hurts everything in it while you just charge after, and it follows you. It, like it's around you, it's an aura, and it's fun to use. Uh, and it. There's just so much versatility. Like you can go like just you can go with, like bows and arrows. They have their own weapon skills. They have like double shot, or they have like a barrage, which is just shoots a bunch of arrows at the same time. You have uh, I think there's a sniping one. I haven't seen tons of them, but I also barely use my bow. I have one uh, if I really am put in a point where I really just like sometimes. I was like, and I haven't seen it this far in Elden Ring yet. Usually in Souls games, you can cut off the tails of most bosses and get a, wep a unique weapon for cutting off the tail of a boss. So like, if you kill, cut off like a dragon's tail, you usually get like a like a, that dragon's, and like its own its own unique model and stuff. And you get like the, like a flame, a flame sword, or or uh, there's one dragon called the Gaping Dragon in Dark Souls One. Uh, that looks like a regular dragon, but when it gets up itself out of the water, it, its its chest actually like unfolds out, and it's just like a ravenous pit full of teeth. If you cut off his tail, you get you get an, uh, a great sword that's actually really cool. Uh, there's an act, but I haven't seen it yet in Elden Ring. I've been trying, but none have come off yet. Uh, but you do get like new spells, you get new weapons, you get all this new stuff when you beat bosses, even minor bosses if it has a big health bar. Uh, usually drops something of some sort that helps you. Uh, whether that be a... And you, generally what I've seen is it's not always the same for everybody. Uh, I think the big bosses do drop like the same... Like it's the same for the big bosses, same. but I think the mini or the smaller bosses are there. And even... And I haven't really seen any bosses that are this like similar. I've killed probably about like... Probably about 15, 20 bosses and they're all different. They all have their own attack moves, they have their own combos, they have their own looks, everything. And that's inclu and most of those are minor bosses, like kind of like side ones that people might not ever even like in their, like your playthrough, you might not even find one or two of the bosses that I fought. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's very it's it's fun. I really hope that you guys do end up going for it. The visuals are fucking gorgeous. I'm not saying they are up to Horizon Zero Dawn's level. They are not. Uh, but from soft 
uh, generally doesn't go that balls to the walls, and this was definitely clearly made with the with last generation consoles in mind, because uh, it's been in it's been in development for a very long time, and the new consoles just came out. Let's be realistic here. Uh, so that's I think, and so it's clearly made for like PS4 and like that stuff. It has the PC version, uh, which people have also been enjoying a lot. I haven't tried it. I want to play the PS5 version, um, but it looks great. Uh, even with that in mind, uh, you it's it, it's just it's just gorgeous. Um, I I can't say it. Any, it's 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 just it's a very unique light area. All the areas have their own biomes, and like it, it's it's very unique. And I've been really enjoying it. You might see like similar enemies here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, like in the first area you're in, uh, you have to take. You're trying to take over one of the castles. And uh, so, like, there's a lot of soldiers in this area. So, like, a lot of, like, a lot of, like, cookie cutter, like, basic infantry in their armor. And then you have, like, some knights on horses. And then you have archers. And you have their own spell. Like, you can recognize these from the weapons they hold or how they look. But, like, if I went, to, but I, like, went uh, to a different area and their sorcerers look completely different. And they use different spells. They use different attacks. Their, their timing was different. Uh, they had like they had their infantry, but they weren't the same infantry. And even those infantry had their own attacks and their own designs and their own combos. It, it's and again, I'm not very far into it. I've only probably looked at probably maybe like five percent of the map so far, and that's just the starting area. And I there's always something different for me to find. It's the best. It's my game of the year this so far. I, something might be thrown it. I'm definitely going to try Forbidden West. Uh, once yeah, I, I definitely this. recommend that. Uh, but, like, it, it's fun. The spells are cool. The summons are cool. And I found out that, like, so there's different, there's a group summons and there's, like, little, and, like, individual summons. One of the individual summons is named Oriella. Uh, the individual summons are named. And if you read the item descriptions, they don't tell you in the item, but if you read the item descriptions, it'll tell you, like, it's a jellyfish that poisons things, uh, and it is like, and apparently just soaks up damage like crazy. I haven't used her yet, but apparently she's a very good, it, it makes the game significantly easier. It can kind of face tank for you if you're having a little bit of issues, and it can, and it is able to poison even the bosses. Uh, and that's another thing is like bosses, like all in Souls game, bosses can take the same debuffs that you take, uh, with some exceptions, obviously, like you're not going to get a skeleton to bleed. Right, you can't inflict you can't inflict bleed on a skeleton, but like if you, if more human enemies with beast enemies, you can definitely use a weapon that inflicts bleed and cause bleed on them, and you can kill them that way if you really just want to play keep away after you get them poisoned or after you get them cut, and it's it's fun. It's I just, I, I really recommend it. I really hope you guys do try it out. I think it's probably the most accessible Souls game that's made in a long time. It's. I have a hard time believe it's a hard, it's hard believing that this is their very first open world game they've ever made, uh, and it's just very unique. It's uh, and yeah, I I don't know what to say you, right now. If you're just gushing about it, I'm gushing about it. I've been streaming it at Boopity Games on Twitch. Uh, Check it out. Throw some clips on the TikTok. Get some more content. Yeah, that's there. what I've been working on. I've been I need to edit them out because, uh, but it's. I've only seen a fraction of this game, and I am constantly thinking about like where I'm going to go next and what I'm going to do, and it's it's fun. And I like the horse tour; it's cool. Uh, there's a hub area. It's it, you know, in, the multiplayer is optional. You can play with other people, like randoms, or you can play with your friends if you have people playing it. You can help them out with the bosses, or vice versa. You get items for helping out. You get, and if you're the one summoning, you get. The fact that they helped you kill a boss, if you get summoned, you can, and they're, like, signs, so, like, when, like, near a boss room, you can lay down your sign, and someone might, you can, like, summon you to their world to help them fight a boss. Uh, it, it's, it's, oh my gosh, it's been fun. I've been talking about it a lot with people, uh, I've been talking about people on Facebook, I've been talking about it with some of my friends on PlayStation, uh, we've been Constantly comparing notes. I found, like, I found uh, there's this soldier guy that tra that tra trains you in the way of the blade and gives you, like, a bunch of different skills for swords. And it costs runes, uh, 
But like he has like a bunch of different skills. He and they're shown off as the ashes of war. And what's nice about them because it's like an enchantment for a weapon. Honestly, some of them even actually raise the quality of a weapon. So like you can raise it from like a basic level to like a to a higher level that like boosts all of its stats on top of whatever it gives you. And uh, and like he just sells them and, just, and it's 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 cool. It's cool. It, it's a good game. I hope you guys try it out. I, I, I definitely plan to. There's a, there's a few games coming out that March that might push it back on me a little bit, but I will eventually try this one out. Yeah, it's I was like, I, and I think you'll have fun with it because I think you tried Sekiro, didn't you? I tried it and I did give up. And, and Sekiro is brutal, and, and it's different from most Souls games because that one they give you one weapon and that's your weapon you're using for the game. You get some very versatility, but it, in this one, it lots of different options. Like, you can go just, like, rogue type, you can go magic type, paladin, you can go anything you want. And, like, all the weapons are pr fairly unique. Like, there's obviously the more mundane weapons, but, like, yeah. like they have a flail, and the flail is a lot of fun because it, they have proper physics. Flail on the around. Yeah. And, and it's, it's skill, if you don't choose to replace it with an Ash of War, uh, literally you just fucking just raise it and just do this and just helicopter around with it. Uh, you don't fly, obviously, but I mean, you just fly. knock everything away from you, and it's yeah. fun that way. And uh, the nice thing about the Ashes of War, since it is an enchantment, you can take them on and off of weapons like as you wish. You have to go to a bonfire uh, to a site of grace to do so. But say like, like some games, similar games that have like enchantment things, like you can try out something new, even if it doesn't sound as extravagant, uh, without like losing out entirely on the previous enchantment you have on there or like say you get a brand new weapon that's way better than your previous weapon but you really want that skill from the other weapon you can take the ash of war off and throw it on that new weapon yeah and legendary weapons you can't add the like the legendary weapons you can't add ashes of war to them because they have like they're just extra exactly. unique uh, but there's so much versatility to it anyways right. if i had a, if i'm rating it right now i'm giving it a 10 out of 10 paid off Yes. <laughs> How much did they pay you? If I'm rated Forbidden West right now, 11 out of 10 is actually... Paid off. Paid off. Paid off. <laughs> you got anything in there? Uh, not a lot no, of news. You guys are still here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, new Pokemon game was announced. I'm going to let Zach tell us a little more about that. He's our resident Pokemon expert. I'm not Gavin's an expert. I'm not, not going to say expert. <laughs> um, hates Pokemon. He hates Pokemon. I do Pokemon. love Pokemon, but earlier this morning... Sunday is when we're filming this. Uh, Pokemon had a live stream where they announced their new Pokemon games. Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. They are going to be two new games in the mainline series. Uh, should be coming out, they said, late fall, which basically means November. They always yeah, come out November. That's all. Other than, like, <laughs> Arceus, but that was a spinoff game. Yeah, like... Uh, um, so, are, are these open world? What are we looking at? So, it... We didn't get a lot of information. The trailer kind of just revealed the name on the starter Pokemon, but on the press release afterwards, it is a borderless, um, open world, kind of like Arceus, where like, but more free, from what it sounds like. Um, you can walk in the towns. There's no like invisible walls or barriers. Um, the wilds are connected straight in the town. You're gonna see the Pokemon running around like you do in Arceus and um, Pokemon Go. Um, I, yeah, um, like I said, not, not a lot of information. We did, like I said, get our... They'll first, probably do a direct soon yeah, in the next um, few months. We did get our first look at the starter Pokemon. Um, well, I feel like they're not amazing, we got a grass type Sprigatito, which is a green cat, which is kind of cute. I'll, maybe you can yeah, put well, these up on... See if I find an image. Oh, there is a trailer. There's, Perfect. Well, there's a lot of images, but this oh, is the what cat. A cutie. Okay. Oh, I've seen her. Have you seen Brigata? Uh, well, I'll probably go with because I always go with fire Pokemon usually. Yeah. Fue Coco. Fue Coco. He at first kind of looked like an apple. Fue Coco. Yeah, I can see the apple. Which His mouth was shut. Which um, kind of made me mad because there's already an apple in, which is basically an apple with a worm coming out of it. And then we've got. Quaxley! Yeah, Quaxley. Yeah, yeah, water types with a bomb. Um, Quaxley for the win. Well, Hopefully we got those up on screen for you. If not, find, Fire guy. find, Fire find Pokemon.com and I'll have them up Eel there. Eel grass type. I usually go fire. 
Uh, so I'm the own water type. I, I always, always go fire. On my first fires time. are strong. Like it honestly makes the game a lot easier. Fire is awesome too. Oh, yeah, it's just burn stuff. Also, like for sun and moon. Starts up not fire. For sun and moon, the fact that Litten, the fire type cat, turned into the fucking like luchador. Luchador, and I use fire. I used uh, flamethrower. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was trying to think. That's how I think of flamethrowers. And yeah, yeah. instead of coming out of his out of his mouth, Infernoroar's mouth, Infernoroar's, who's the luchador, because he just turns into like a luchador cat, mm -hmm. it comes out of the belt, but it just looks like he's just humping the air and just letting a fire cock come out, and it was the greatest thing ever. Oh, well, I think I did start with started. grass type that on my playthrough of Sun, just because Alan was kind of cool when he evolved. Um, he was like an English archer owl at the at Third Evolution. Um, well, this, is, this is Gen 9, if I re remember this right. Like I said, I'm predicting it in November. Mm -hmm. um, it'll probably come out, I'm going to say November 18th this year. Um, Sun and what Moon came out. 15th. Yeah, but what day of the week is that? I'm not even looking at the calendar yet. This is just a hard guess. <laughs> but um, Sun and Moon came out on my birthday. I remember that. That's what I want to know. A little too far. Uh, my birthday is on a Tuesday. So yeah, 18th might be perfect. Yeah, that would be, be Friday. Friday. Yeah. So yeah, that'll be my prediction. 18th. I said it now. Um, we'll go back to this when they actually release the release date. Um, but yeah, looks awesome. I always get the new Pokemon games. I haven't got uh, Brilliant Star or Diamond or Pearl yet because it's a remake. It's a remake. Um, I do want to eventually play them because there's a lot of events going on where they're giving you free Pokemon. I still have to finish Arceus, which has been a blast, but Forbidden West is taking up my time now. Um, what else was there? There was something else. I honestly don't know. Uh, all I know lately is Elden Ring. WWE 2K22 comes out March 11th. We do have a few <laughs> March releases, that's right. Yeah. Um, do you have them pulled up? Yeah, no. I can't. I already have them. Oh, no. <laughs> Tell him then. Why are you asking him? Because this is his. Gran Turismo episode. comes out in March. Yeah, we got Gran Turismo Seven. Yeah. Uh, we have the WWE 2K22. Let's fucking yeah. go. GTA Five's next gen version yeah, comes out. That'll be cool. Persona Five. Four. Oh, Ghostwire, isn't it? Ghostwire. No, 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 no. no yeah. Ghostwire March 21st. Oh, May is Sons of the Force. Uh, we also have Kirby: The Forgotten Land. If you like that, those games, Death Stranding Director's Cut. There's the mouthful mode in the Kirby. Hell yeah, I'll be playing Death Stranding Director's Cut. Crusader Kings 3. I thought that was already out. Weird West, which was announced in the last Game Awards. Yeah, it looks yeah. cool. Um, and yeah, that's the big ones this year. Or this right. month. So, Mark. Yeah, so the only thing new coming out, I think, between now and the next time I record Grand Turismo. But then after that, I will have WWE. WWE. And that is going to take up all my time like Elden Ring is taking up all of Gavin's time. I am on the fence right now. I yeah, really... I'm going to definitely get that and then Forspoken or my big march. Ooh, Forspoken is march. Is Forspoken? Uh, Forspoken. I thought that was me. March 24th. Forspoken will be dope. I forgot about that. I keep forgetting about it too, but it looks awesome. Yeah, it looks really cool. Isaka. Isaka. Kind of the nice part about the group that we have here is that we all kind of play something different. Mm -hmm. So, like, we should hit most major game releases. May 25th ones. for Forspoken. So it's pushed back. Oh, uh, I guess. According to Google. Well, that's dumb. That is dumb. That had me in a panic because I was in between trying to decide WWE 2K22, <laughs> which would be the first sports game I've bought myself. In May 25th, yeah, it got pushed back. Probably yeah. 15 years. <laughs> um, or getting Ghostwire pre ordered. Yeah, I, I Ghostwire that. I'm pumped for. It yeah, I really want to play that. Alright. There's going to be a lot of good games this year. Yeah. And we still have it's a long, long time to go. Light up. We're long just getting time started. For, uh, surprise announcements this year. And we already had the worst game of the year with Elden Ring, so. <laughs> I mean. The year's I not don't, over. You are so far. I I don't see that one in any awards at the game once. No. Not a single one. I don't see a sweep <laughs> in the board. Yeah, no way, no. <laughs> no way. Alright. Mm -hmm. It's basically it's basically what happened with 
who takes Cyberpunk. Oh. We got anything else? Not that I can think of right now. If that I can think of. It was a light week. Pokemon was the big one. We wouldn't even have that. I think they're doing a whole celebration this week and next week. uh, Or this week and the previous week. I can't remember exactly what it is. For Pokemon's anniversary. Yeah, I think it already started. And that's one of the announcements today. Um, So it'll be going all week. Hopefully sometime we'll get a DLC announcement for Arceus. I'm hoping. It'd be really cool. Or a announcement of a sequel what are you talking about the sequel what are you talking about the dlc for arceus is just violet and sky come on it's pokemon they kind of there was it. that all right so apparently there's gonna be an update coming out tonight it's probably already came out today um where they're doing uh, so in the game they have outbreaks where like certain pokemon will spawn in a great number um uh, all in one spot it's usually just the weaker uh, versions of those Pokemon, but they're doing an update where they're adding um, <coughs> date breaks, I think they're calling it, where it's the alpha Pokemon with the red eyes, the very strong, tall versions of those Pokemon, spawning in great numbers in one spot. Um, and then more trainer battles, is what I read. Because trainer battles is something that is actually kind of lacking in this game. You get them every once in a while as like checkpoints basically throughout the story. Mm-hmm. I believe that. That's good. Yeah. How's that? Alright. Well, where can we reach you, Zach? Home. Home. <laughs> and Gavin? Boopity Games, Twitch. Thank you. Yeah, check him out. He's going to be playing a lot of Elden Ring. Zach does a lot of movie and TV show reviews. Check him, also... out at home. Uh, check him out at Film home. Film Beast on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Instagram. And then, of course, if you like this next week, I'm sure we're going to have more on Elden Ring. We'll have more on Horizon. And we don't have a whole lot unless we get some news drops. Uh, um, yeah, if you ever pick up Dying Light, we'll start that. Yeah, I know. I'm watching so many, like, unlock the lightsaber, unlock the broom. <laughs> but uh, outside of that, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please give us a like, comment, and follow. Follow Gavin on Twitch. I mean, if you're interested in Elm Ring and you can't pick it up right now, he's going to be streaming the whole thing on there. So you might as well give it a watch. And he's getting good at video games, so... You'll get to watch somebody who... It's very rare we actually admit that. <laughs> Thanks, guys. He's, well, he's good at Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's cool. I was like, if you watched me play Sekiro, you would have been like, wow, he's really good. And then watch me die to the same scrub-ass fucking boss. I was, it wasn't even a boss. I kept dying over and over again. I felt like a fucking scrub. <laughs> it was so bad. Um, but outside of that... It is time, time to, to split. split.